So hello, um, everybody. Um, my name is David Rigger. So I'm the CEO of Hans Robot, a company which is um, working on the new generation robotics. Um, like nothing what you know until now. So we are really working on the future of the robotics. And I think, and I'm very hap uh, happy and also thankful uh, to have this opportunity to talk actually about this wonderful topic future of work and also our robots actually friends or foes and yeah so i think it fits very very much into uh you know, me as a person also the company i'm leading a little bit about the agenda oh, one second so um today actually we are going to talk first a little bit about robotics on itself like the history where like the first robot get actually where we talked the first time about the robot where the first robot was actually really used and um for sure about the topic like what do people think about robots where does it come from and uh which problems are to solve in the world maybe with robots and also the social impact for sure um of robots and what is missing in the world of robotics, maybe, um, what we are actually also working on right now. Um, I have to organize that here quickly because <laughs> it was before. So now, yeah. So first, let's go a little bit into like where is actually the word coming from, robot, or um, it comes actually from robota, and it was actually already in the 1920s where. Um, um, a Czech person, like uh, from Czech uh, Republic, um, was mentioned first time in a book. And so robota actually means forced labor, so something like a slave, something which is created to to serve humans. Or, and um, the funny thing is, actually, in 1920s there was not even uh, one robot really existing which could actually already do something um, like serving humans but they were already all the time thinking on that and if you if we go like even back a little bit farther back into the history um, you will see actually there's even 400 years before christ there was already um, like nations talking about something like a robot here is like even in a Greek myth, uh, there was actually Talos. Uh, it was like kind of a robot. It was a, 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 like a man, like a like a fighter out of um, out of um, um, brass, and um, it was supposed actually to to protect the island of Greece, which uh, which is Greek. Uh, Greek. And um, so it was not really a moving rope, but they actually built it up to just protect it. And uh, so, and even later it was like a god for them, which was protecting the island of uh, Greece. So then we know, I think it's more popular, it was Da Vinci. It was like, I think one of the uh, most greatest minds um, ever existed. And even he was like already talking about uh, a robot and he presented also a moving robot but completely mechanical um, which he presented in Milan to a court um, which was also already about um, creating something which was moving uh, mechanically and and actually doing later maybe some work and help us. Maria Metropolis was actually the first science fiction movie which uh, had already a robot um, in it and also i think more i think you will know electro electro was the first like the smoking robot <laughs> a robot which was actually already um, electronics and was already moving his arms legs and also the hat and was able to blow uh, balloons and things so it was the first like really um moving robot presented which was already with electronics and the funny thing is it was actually already voice control like in the 1939, so it means uh, it was about, I think, 700 words what uh, this robot understood already and was putting out actions out of it. I think also very famous was uh, the moral code 
by Isaac Asimov. I think it's until now still, um, I think, very important to us. So I think the most uh, important one was a robot should actually never harm or never um, hurt a human. And was actually a moral code for even until now for AI and also for robotics. Right? Um, the first really used robot and also something which we see until now, it was actually Unimate. Unimate was installed in 1961. It was actually, they start to, uh, to develop in 1954 and 1961, they finally finished and were installing this robot at GM uh, in the United States uh, as a first robot which moves parts from A to B and was even doing some welding applications, more the habit you to work, like we know it until now, the industrial robots, right? Um, I don't go too deep to others. I think it will take too much time. I think a very like a famous one is also RT-D2 uh, in 1972, uh, 77. Um, was a Star Wars movie and made actually robotics really famous worldwide. Right? Um, the first robot to Mar Mars. Um, so was actually also a robot because we are not able to go there or we don't uh, want to risk our life, but we want to see some picture of it. So this is why we sent like the first robot to Mars in actually 1997. Yeah, Siri is very famous and Waymo, I think also. Um, here we see actually what, what was uh, also very exciting to see for myself, actually that until, um, until 1961, the robot was always looking the same. Or for everybody, uh, in everybody's mind was a robot like a humanoid robot something which uh, looks a little bit similar to humans and uh, something which can help us which can really like also like the word say uh, robot like the uh, something like the slave for humans which is supposed to help us in every kind of fields yeah but how like what is actually for you personally like right now a robot or and that's actually also a good question because uh, mostly when i'm home with my parents or also with my friends. When I talking about robots, I'm super excited about what we did. And they were mostly they think about a humanoid robot, something which is moving like and looks like a human, like iRobot, like the movie. Um, but for many others, the, the robot is also something different. Like we see here, like we have all kind of robots. Like one is like a humanoid robot, uh, which like here from SoftBank, uh, which is more like really um, for the hotelry, like something is uh, AI and speak uh, re recognition and actually uh, should help or supposed to help like in a hotelry. Also Da Vinci, I think very famous is a surgery robot, um, which is actually until now also applied in many hospitals as a, as a um, uh, yeah, surgery robot. We have here a standard industrial robot more like in the automotive industry, like in welding application, assembly applications, and like all kind of different, even like flying robots, which we call drones. Uh, we have also like AGVs, AMRs, like robots which are moving on the floor more for logistic reasons. Also like even like um, financial bots or which predict maybe like uh, uh, the falling or raising of shares. Um, also we have today cobots, which are actually uh, collaborative robots, which are supposed to, uh, to also work side by side with humans and uh, support their work, making maybe, maybe more uh, genomics or um, also just support them and by not killing them. And um, we have also here, um, like it's a exoskelet, which is supporting maybe disabled people, but also like even also use in military or in other kind of like even automotive by mounting something and having also more ergonomic, ergonomic um, work. So we have many kind of robots, but what is actually uh, the reason for the development of robots and uh, why actually like the first real um, integrated robot was also like was 1961 uh, GM. And it was mostly about like it is until now. So until now, there was not much changes for that. Until now, there's still, um, the robots are there to really reduce the costs um, by having like, because they're just much faster. They don't have any brakes. 
Um, so the same like an increasing quality because it's always the same quality. Um, also increase controllability, um, reduce time because uh, a robot uh, really, um, how to say it, do it like always the same and in the very, very shortest time or and 24 seven if you want to. Increase productivity, I think it's everything included, all of them. And for sure, like also there is no Monday or Friday for a robot. So it means like on a Monday morning, um, there's like actually even proven that the, mostly the quality of the products increase or decrease like uh, on Friday also the same. Um, and that's actually the, the purpose why we use right now robots to have like always the same quality productivity, mostly in the really mass production, like things like in the automotive and everywhere else. So why actually, like what, what do actually the people think about robot? It was actually the question also to answer like this big question, our friend, uh, robots, friends or foes, I think uh, we should just see what the humans uh, think right now or the people think. Um, and we see also here, like I took just some three examples, um, uh, two from United States and one from Germany. It was actually, um, it, I was also surprised because um, the society, uh, like 85% of the society actually think that, um, or they, they, um, they actually say that robots um, should do just only dangerous work or dangerous tasks. So uh, nothing what everybody can do, just things which are too dangerous which is also an yeah, interesting aspect. And also, why do they think like that? Really important is like the 72% uh, of the society thinks actually, um, or they are concerned about that robots will take their jobs. And I think that's actually also the reason what I hear the most, or even my parents tell it to me, also my family. Everybody um, asks me like, okay, are, you not, are we feeling good? Like taking our jobs? And uh, to answer that, I think we will go later a little bit deeper into this question. The same um, in Germany, every third person in Germany think actually that AI is, is something dangerous and will uh, change our life not to something good, but something bad maybe. So the question also here, like where does a fear come from? Because we saw also before there is already, yes, all kind of robots existing, but uh, not something really in our homes right now or something which we have experience in. So somewhere has the fear come from her. And um, my opinion on that is actually for sure it comes, um, yeah, from also from Hollywood. All right? I think they take a big part of it uh, because we see like all this movie and they actually, so the first science fiction movie was like very early already with Maria, I think I mentioned in the beginning and um, they had a lot of success with that because people um, like sometimes, okay, uh, we see a human as our enemy, but I think it was much easier also to bring like robots into this and, and say, okay, they're the enemies and they're getting smarter. It's a very nice uh, story. Um, and and they're getting like, like fighter bots and like in, um, or also like they are getting very, very intelligent and taking all of, uh, over the world. And we are, uh, we are getting actually the opposite way. So we are going to be the slaves of robots. And that's what many people think about. And um, uh, help to this uh, fear actually that our jobs, others uh, one day robots will be smarter than us. And even like also the, uh, the statistics of Japan is actually uh, um, scary for some people because there is about 3,700 uh, men. It was from 2016 to 18, now even more, um, are actually married to robots or robot holograms, like the perfect, the perfect partner. Or, and even this is actually also one of the fears which uh, humans have. So, now the question, because also even my personal, like even me, like how I just want to uh, be a little bit more personally here and also talk about how I decided actually 
uh, to create robots or what what is the reason why do, why I do robots because I'm actually I would say a social guy I was also doing some social work before some years ago and um, was working as a case manager uh, help, helping homeless people helping people uh, which are coming out of prisons so I have so I'm I am thinking it's one of my passion is actually being social and humans I love humans and uh, the other passion actually on my side was actually technology, something creating something new, which, and I thought how to create the best two, uh, two of my passions and do something great, something which is really br bringing a big impact to the world, positive pink, uh, impact, not a bad one. And um, in this case, I actually started to think about building robots or right? creating robots, making robots uh, smarter, making robots um, like, change them a little bit to really create something which can, is able to help humans and also solving big human issues which are actually uh, facing us in the future by new technologies and by robots. Right? So um, the first thinking there also, how should actually, uh, what is actually a good thing about human or what is actually important on a human? I think. Uh, the human nature is actually being kind or being respectful, being adaptable, uh, creative, empathic, and for sure all, of, all in once is like being social, like helping each other and working with each other. Like if we are social, we have a, a, a very good life. Or if we, have, if we are passionate, if we are respectful, if we are kind, I think we would not have wars. We would not have like all these issues which we have right now, even private issues like uh, back home or... And uh, where are many issues coming from? It's really uh, interesting that most of them are actually coming out of the work and the jobs we have right now. And um, because there's right now many, many jobs which are uncreative. So you're doing like the whole day the same thing. And, and then like it's also maybe for some weeks it's cool, maybe, but after for a long, long time, I think it's getting also uh, affecting this, uh, this person. Or, the same also on the unhealthy um, work because right now we are putting actually uh, humans and people like really into dangerous work just because they have, we have to because we think okay it's important uh, because we need some new airports and we have to put some people's life in danger or uh, we need something like some new kind of uh, watch or whatever and for that people are getting in uh, in, in danger or. And also, and I think all in one, there's many jobs which are totally unsocial. Or, and this is actually affecting ourselves, our human nature, and our, uh, like, um, our person actually on itself. So there is, uh, like, in my opinion, there is like many things which we could actually solve with robotics. And, um, and even the issues which are facing us personally, like even like in, in the situation right now, there's one, um, one big issue which is facing us is actually the aging population. We call it also silver society. So um, right now, like if we talk about Germany, we have a very great system or if it's about retirement um, uh, fast, so when we're getting older, we feel like very secure. Not anymore, I think the most young people, but um, the generation before, they feel like very secure because they know they pay like every month into a system and a fall, and one day they will get earned that without doing something. Maybe it's with 65 until now, now it's getting 67. And the issue for that is actually that we have now more older persons than younger persons, and it will get the next years even worse and worse. And uh, the, during this time, the, even this whole system will collapse. So every government right now thinks about how to solve this issue. Some of them are solved actually in a very bad way. I, I'm not going to judge that, but um, so there is uh, everybody trying to do. But uh, my personal thinking about that is actually we could solve this issue also with robots, like something which is assisting us, which is helping or doing some work which we maybe can't do or making actually some works more attractive um, to the world. Or, and also I think what I mentioned before also, we are putting people in danger. There's about 2.3 million, it's, that's uh, ridiculous. There's 2.3 million people around the world um, which are facing or like 
um, uh, disease or actually even um, accidents by doing work. That's crazy. Even 6,000 people every day are dying by doing work or, uh, or dying by the, uh, by the disease which they got from work. And many people think um, like that's unsocial to put robots into, into, into uh, the industries because they are taking jobs away, but maybe they should take some danger jobs away or something which is, uh, which is actually totally unsocial uh, what we live in right now. Um, there is also right now a situation uh, where I think a robot uh, could help. It's actually uh, the, the issue which is like very recent right now is actually pandemics um, of COVID-19. Even there, we put actually people in danger um, just because we want to keep somehow our like food lines or how do you call it, uh, alive, our stores alive, or so that we somehow can survive. Or, and um, the same also, I think um, there we could actually like um, bring robots into the whole system to get more stability inside, not just in the economy, because even the economy with robots is much more stable. Uh, also like in, in all kinds of um, work, which is like, if we talk about food supply and everything like that. Or, and the robot would bring actually a little bit more safety, for sure, more safety and uh, stability, even during pandemics like COVID-19 right now. Also a big uh, social um, impact uh, of the robots is actually in the, um, for sure, stabilizing the economy because the economy right now, um, we see it like very much uh, with COVID-19, there is many, many companies are really suffering because for sure, they cannot send uh, everybody like to uh, to work because they uh, they would put them in danger because they maybe they had one case or whatever. And um, also, like uh, with robots, uh, everything would look a little bit differently because the robots could bring their a little bit stability. So at least you can keep going with a, a smaller production or whatever. And the same in constant food supply. So by agrar robots, like there's something which is also now coming more and more, we could actually have more stability even to get the food. Even the persons cannot get out there. Also the logistics, like using robots to bring it into the stores and also there to spread it out in the stores by robots, by not bringing people into danger. Here we see a lot, uh, like also uh, three, um, happy people. So, <laughs> um, these are not person which just lost their jobs. Um, actually, this is actually something, um, when we bring robots, uh, into the field, we can make also people happier. So we are not, we cannot automate everything. So everybody loses just their jobs and nobody has something to do. Or in this time, I think it's a very big, uh, time of change again, like we had also with with the internet or right? everybody was scared of the internet comes and takes our jobs away. There was for sure the uh, people which lost their job. But I think many, many other, I think it was just better spread it afterwards, got new jobs. Even we are talking right now through the internet. Right? And that's the same with, uh, with the robotics. Robots will take maybe some dangerous jobs. Um, robots will maybe take some like really boring jobs or jobs which which are like um, unsocial um, or even like jobs which don't, uh, how to say it? Um, yeah, like all kind of jobs, <laughs> sorry. And, um, but these people are happier because maybe they have less stress or these people are happier because um, they are not in danger. And that's what I want to say. Like robots can even solve many, many issues at also at home because I had this question also what we saw before. Uh, once uh, through an in Instagram talk and they asked me actually about when is the time coming to get married actually with, to a robot? When is the robot actually that beautiful and also that attractive that we can get married to it? Or, and the, the funny question is like, uh, or we actually never thought about that, <laughs> but we said, okay, we don't, we are not building robots to get married with or because that's actually what you should still do maybe with a partner or which you maybe are in a relationship. But maybe with a robot, we can actually make the life easier maybe for your partner or for yourself to not be always stressed when you're coming home. Because uh, the most people are which 
even getting uh, divorced also, they, they have some issues also which, which is related also to, to their jobs because they're too stressful, there's too less people because they have to make somehow profit they, and they use the uh, people and let them suffer for that. And that's something which I think we could actually uh, solve by also using Robert as the supporter as an assistance by work. So I think also one of the solution which we actually personally see and I as a person also uh, work for and we think it's a big impact which the politicians have to decide for is actually the robot taxation or I mean that's also one uh, solution maybe to get everything in, in how to say it in wage again or everything in the same uh, in a good direction or because for sure you're uh, is right that if we just use robots there are going people to lose their jobs and if you use robots for sure there is not many winners or I mean robots is like the factory maybe which is using them which is automating and the robot manufacturer they profit out of it and um, here I think we should somehow get everything in balance again and the, uh, the solution for that I believe it's robot taxation because with robot taxation we could actually have a flow back of money again uh, into the industries into actually more the social um, um, yeah, in the social how to say it <laughs> uh, society or that we we can actually improve with this flow back of money we can pr improve the education or also even these people which lost their job by uh, because of a robot we could somehow catch them up again and also help them and also give them maybe some trainings in different kind of jobs maybe more social maybe something which they always want to do but we're not never able to and also we could actually provide this money should be just first of all should be for, uh, just flowing maybe into the social uh, social fund or and this should be maybe divided by like providing universal healthcare because in Germany we have a very good healthcare yes we have but in the future, even there are going to be changes because the whole system, like with young and old people which are working for, uh, for money and also uh, people which are uh, just getting money because they are retired, because they deserve it, yes. Um, but the whole system will collapse because of the situation which we are facing. Right? And we, I believe actually that robot taxation could be a, a big helper here in all these fields. Right? And um, also re redistribution of wealth because uh, the taxation we could actually use for many other social projects where we can also re redistribute like the whole wealth worldwide. So I talked about many things which we could actually solve um, with a robot right? and it sounds sometimes also nice. I don't, I'm not sure if you all guys agree for sure. I'm very excited and happy also to hear the question later. Um, what is actually missing to have a true assistant? Because uh, when I was talking also, the purpose of a robot, which we saw uh, in the beginning, like uh, where the name comes from, uh, robota, something which is really forced labor, something which is supporting humans, helping us and doing all the work which we don't want to do. Maybe. So if we look right now in the situation, we, um, and that's actually also the reason why I personally, um, like uh, created this new company, Hans Robot, where we, uh, we, we thought, okay, there is a big lack actually of, um, of robots which are actually able to do this kind of jobs or able to help humans. And for that, I think there is two t a key technologies still missing. So one is actually having more senses into, into, into our assistant. Or if, if I personally think about an assistant, I mostly think about you're, you're not thinking about something which is like not seeing you or right? um, and also you don't think about a system which is not maybe not hearing you or right? and also not maybe able to touch something uh, and able to have the feel of touch because you don't want that a system helps you and just destroys every glass which is touching or it destroys everything what you're giving into their hands. So this is actually until now still a very big lag if we look into the robotics the most are no there's no robots right now there's actually a commercial uh, commercialized robot which has actually the sciences in its in in, in, in inside yeah. and also I think a very big um, also very important is actually the the mind behind it or if we it does not help us if we have the senses of seeing hearing and feeling and we don't have the mind 
to take uh, or create actions out of it. And that's actually the AI, uh, which is still very much in the development and what we are actually also work, working very hard on it to create the mind to really react on certain, uh, certain sense, uh, stances to really support the human being. Right? And here's actually also a nice uh, picture of, of what is actually needed to have um, a true robotic assistant. I think it's very technical, but we need for sure the hardware which is really developed uh, to be like maybe if we talk about the arm, which is like an arm to, to really um, grab something, to be sensitive, to be accurate maybe in some uh, in fields. Also to have the sensors actually, um, which mostly were not created or until now. And so right now they're coming more and more like vision sensors, also sensors to maybe detect a human. Or I mean, right now that's actually also crazy that we have also like cobots, something which is um, uh, collaborative robots is supposed to work with humans. But until now, we even define norms, which, which says how much pressure the robot is able to do, bring on the body to not kill maybe the person, not hurt the person. But um, we personally believe, or I believe also, that a robot should never harm a human, or like the first law from Asimov. Or, and, um, and we call uh, the whole system actually a cognitive robot, a robot which is actually knowing the environment, uh, so by, by, and also by interacting with our whole environment. Or, and for that, there is many things needed or inside the robot. We have it now even in smartphones, like the speak recognition, like if we talk about Siri, or we, have, we talk about even like uh, sensors for seeing, like for out of the automotive industry or wherever. And now, but they're still not inside the robot. And that's what actually I think the work of uh, what which need to be done to really have something which is really able to also do bring some social impact and also change something in the world, make the world easier. Um, and that's actually, yeah, still need to be, uh, be done. All right. So we are coming actually to the big question back, like will robots actually be friends or foes? And I think, I hope I could give you a little bit of input, like what about the current state of robotics, something uh, which is still there. And um, actually our answer actually on, on that, or my personal answer is actually, is your choice. Because if, if we think even back, like, or if we think about even planes, we can have the same conversation right now. Will plane be friend or foe? We could say the same. Yes, you can use it for sure as a transport plane, something which is transporting uh, people from A to B. You can use it actually as a private jet or whatever, but you can also use it as a, as a fighter jet, right? And the same, you can also say about many other things, even about cars, you can use them as a standard uh, driving from A to B, or you use it actually for something as, as like, uh, which is doing something bad or with a gun on top or whatever. And that's actually also the answer on the whole question. Uh, we think that robots can bring a very big positive impact, a helping impact into the world and also can do something bad of it. So that's why we are doing it to create something good out of it. I hope I, um, yeah, I answered some of the questions. I just saw my, my time is up. So I am very, very thankful and grateful um, uh, to be able to have uh, a talk with you guys. And also, um, I hope we can stay connected. Also in the future, uh, you can um, see, uh, find me on LinkedIn um, or also like uh, just scan this QR code. So I'm very, very happy about it and uh, thankful for this opportunity. Nice, yeah, thanks for being here. Um, I mean, we still have 10 minutes officially, so um, can you see the questions in the chat? Somehow not. <laughs> okay, I can read them out to you if you want. So, because we, we have a few. Um, do you consider robots to be equivalent to automation or is there more to them, kind of AI, at least limited autonomous action related to situation? Um, sorry, I did not really understand that. Well, me neither. Um, uh, let's break it down maybe. Do you consider robots to be equivalent to automation? Um, so if they're like just uh, there for, for automation, that's the question, or? Um, yeah, like, if, like would you say that all automation is robotics or, or do you think there's, like how would you differentiate yes, uh, the Yes, actually there's the word coming from or something which is uh, really what also 
something which is automating something, yes? It's a robot. So an autonomous system which is working by itself. Right? Mm -hmm. But not all automation is robotics, right? Because they like you can di digitally automate stuff as well. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, what would good education with re regard to robotics look like, in your opinion? The good education uh, uh, towards robotics, or no, like for something? robotics to understand it. Um, like maybe for kids or for employees to understand the topic and the field. Actually, we are even working right now on that uh, topic uh, in our company right now. We are uh, developing an educational robot because we thought there is still a big lack uh, for that. And um, I think for kids and for everything, I mean, there, there will be released something which uh, we call like a virtual robot. Uh, so people can just log in and start the first time getting in, in uh, contact with a yeah. robot arm, so okay, I have to divide it again because I'm, when I'm talking about robot, and that's what I said in the beginning, every person that talks about a uh, different kind of robot, right? I'm talking about robot arms and even later like something like a human, uh, humanoid robot. Right? And I think there, um, still, I think there's many books about robots or about automation robots and also I think even um, now they're getting more and more even in all, even the preschools closer to that and that's what we are actually also working on to bring their like uh, educational robots into schools or that mm. people get earlier in touch, know how to, to interact with it and also how to program it. Nice, nice. What do you think about these Lego robots that p kids can play with? Yeah, they are pretty cool. I, I like them. And I think it's, yes, the first touch. And I think there yeah. is actually, um, yeah, you can learn a lot about it. I think. Nice. All right, Jonathan is asking, is there a correlation between a, how humanoid a robot is and how unsettling we find it, this uncanny valley. And thus, do you think that striving for realism is even a good idea, or should we make robots look very unhuman? Ah. Yeah, it's actually an ethical thing. And um, me personally, I, I think um, I like it actually if it looks more like a human, but not like with a human skin. So it should be still a touch of, of a machine, or <laughs> because I think um, they should. And we are also really working hard on that. We, we don't want to create like a second kind of human. We are really trying to, uh, to have just something which is able to support humans. And also everybody always know it is a human. Because I saw also many movies <laughs> where you see actually they have to somehow find out if they're humans or robots or, um, but I think it's better like if you really know it's a robot and they're supposed to support you and also to help you and make your life easier. That's actually what I think. Nice. Uh, one second. Are you talking about AI in the cloud or about AI on the edge within the autonomous robot itself? Actually, we are working on um, AI on, on the robot on itself, but in the future, I believe it will be AI in the cloud. AI in the cloud. Um, because <laughs> right now, even the computer power and everybody, like I hear many times, like robotic companies talking about they're having AI in their systems. And then I see like what, what, uh, what computer they have inside and I don't believe it anymore. So that's actually is, um, the big thing we are still working on and what actually even NVIDIA works right now on very much uh, to create something which is also <laughs> in the size and still with a very high computing power. And that's actually right now still, um, like we are working on to bring it into the robot. Why? Uh, because we are working also in the industry. So we're working with big partners which don't want to be in the cloud and which don't want send, uh, something out of it. Or they have their own server. That's a one re, uh, solution, but really into a uh, cloud, which is maybe in our hands, I don't think it will happen very fast. But then these are mostly immobile robots, right? Uh, no, also like in even like robotic arms, we have right now also there, uh, a lot of computing power inside already. We have there some boards um, which are able to, uh, yeah, make their own decisions by AI on the robot directly. Mm. But I mean, they're stationary in a factory then. Yes. Yeah. So, so like size and weight doesn't really matter. Yes, right. <laughs> but for sure, uh, it would be great if everybody agree with that. But I, until now, for sure, they are still a little bit scared of uh, in the industry, like to really use clouds for that to because they're scared of losing data or uh, yeah. yeah, there is still a, a long way to go, I think, in this. Yeah. All right. Uh, Reiner is asking, uh, what is your business model? What What are you selling? Myself or what we are doing? Like, yeah, Hans Robot. Uh, Hans Robot, actually, the business model is uh, we're creating 
um, robots which are going to um, or which are helping humanity or first we start for sure in this field where robots are already accepted in the industries and medicals and uh, everywhere where we can use a robot just not as a robot as we know right now we are more as a robot uh, a cognitive robot which really knows the environment mm. and that's actually right now the first steps uh, but for sure the business model of, even for future we are going to build uh, the first real humanoid robot, which is really able to interact and really are able to su uh, support uh, humans even at home one day. But we, sh we start there and what we did right now also what we will present very soon is more really um, in factories, also in like maybe coffee shops, maybe also like everywhere where we can use robots. But I think that's the beginning of bringing robots everywhere in every kind of fields. And then you, you work with a pay per robot, like a normal sales uh, fee, or are you more on the kind of like a SaaS uh, service? Um, Robotics no, we, as a service. We actually work there mostly with partners. Uh, so we, we choose some partners and also partner choose us <laughs> um, from different kind of fields. Like yeah. from medical field, maybe also for, yeah, I, I don't want to tell all the fields, but uh, there's many new fields are also coming up, which were not able to use the robot because they were not smart enough and also did not have several sensors or senses uh, until now. And this is actually what we made. Or, so we choose some very good partners and, and uh, created something really for their fields. Or, mm. And uh, yeah, what we are going to present very soon. Nice. All right, next question is, um, with regards to IoT, sensors and actors in all kinds of devices, where is the differentiation between what you call a robot and whatnot? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. I call, <laughs> for me, the robot is, uh, is a robot or like a robot arm or uh, even AMR, like something like a mo uh, mobile uh, robot or even uh, like a robot arm or even also drones. But there is also like many other kind of robots, uh, like even financial bots or whatever, which are more just like virtual robots. Mm -hmm. right? And um, I think for their the deviation for me is um, actually, yeah, I don't know how to answer that actually. Because yeah. for me personally, I have a, a view of robots, which is very simple, like uh, for, uh, but I think everybody should create their own mind about like what's a robot for them. Right? I think always it's an autonomous system which can work by himself without having a, a human interacting with. Mm -hmm. Although it's still a little tricky to differentiate, right? Because if you have a, a little sensor at a door which turns on the light, if the door opens, then that's kind of autonomous, but not it's really. It's actually right. autonomous. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really a robot, right? But yes, I, yeah. maybe that's everyone true. needs to decide that for themselves to some degree. All right, uh, one minute left and two questions. So um, Anna is asking, when will we see cities full of robots? Um, I hope for sure very soon. <laughs> and I hope they will be uh, with us, right? Um, yeah, so... You make a public bet, like so. <laughs> on yes, a I think um, actually very, very soon, because I think there is a, a little, like just a very little part missing actually for that. Uh, to 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 use robots everywhere and have robot really as a as a helper in our system and I think there also the people will the humans will accept it much easier when we show something which is really able to interact or really able to also uh, distinguish maybe human from other objects because yeah. that's actually not happened until now and um, that's actually the the very big step which we are doing is actually um, first. We, we don't, we want to interact with the human. So we should first know what's actually a human or is it a human or is it the other object? And that's until now not there. And that's actually what we are doing. Right? I but think then yeah. uh, also the norms and everything will be changed a little bit more easier maybe to bring robots also into many kind of fields because the safety issue is the biggest issue which we have right now. But isn't it mostly regulation being quite emotional about this? I mean, Tesla cars are more safe than most first like driven once by humans and you could easily have delivery drones and like delivery robots if it were <laughs> only legal, right? Yes, uh, that's actually um, right now a very big uh, thing actually. And that's what I actually also worked on. I'm also certified in machinery safety and uh, expert. And um, there actually, I always fight it with this norms 
which are much more stricter, like even in the industries and everywhere than everywhere else. But I, now I like it actually. And I think it is good uh, for the development uh, or for the future because somehow, um, yeah, in the cars, like we cannot use even AI for safety reasons. So we cannot use right now, like it would be easy for us to just distinguish a human from something else with machine learning. Or, but until now, it's not possible because the norms say very clear, it has to be um, like redundant, it has to be a sensor, it has to be clear data, which distinguish a human from, uh, from, uh, from other objects. And that's why there is no solution until now, until we bring something out very soon. Nice, excited for that. Okay, last question. Um, what kind of sensors will your solution have integrated to perceive the environment? To see the environment, we have uh, several sensors, like vision sensors, um, so cameras, also like not just uh, RGB, but also like even point clouds to also have the depth, uh, depth information. And um, that's just actually what we are using right now. Right? And I think that's very state of the art. So and there is already solutions for that, but never like really integrated in a system. And that's actually what we're doing. So you, you purely rely on, on, on basically similar to the human eye perception, yeah. not infrared or, or um, lasers. Um, it's or also integrated, but I like, I, because we did not release yet. So this is why I would uh, not tell okay. exactly <laughs> what we are using, but we are using actually something for sure to have maybe some depth information, have uh, some pictures. And also even like what you talked about, even if you use infrared, so you have like even uh, uh, a little bit more than just human senses inside. <laughs> I hope so. so All right. Uh, things which are maybe behind something or even uh, you think, uh, see things which have different temperatures or things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, I, ho I hope to have you back here um, on one of our, our digital events when you do have the release so we can maybe talk about that in more depth. Very soon. In October, we will have actually a very exciting uh, it will be an um, event like here in the Stadthalle Reutling. It's okay. actually, um, we will have a pre-launch for our partners and there's still some seats left. So if uh, you guys are interested, just sign up on, uh, on our website, which is handsrobot.de. And um, so we are excited. It, it will be worth to go there because it will be really cool what we will show. Nice, all right. Then thanks a lot for being here today. Um, to the questions that were maybe not answered yet, uh, just find David on, on LinkedIn, shoot him a message. Um, I, I hope you find the time to, to answer oh, sure. these last questions. We'll be happy to hear some yeah. Okay. All right, it was a pleasure to have you on board and um, see you next time, yeah? See you, thank you so much. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye.